there, this is Mrs. Often, and I'm excited to be talking today about inverse matrices. You know how real numbers have an inverse? So, for example, the inverse, the multiplicative inverse of 2 is 1 half, because when you multiply 2 and 1 half, you get 1. The multiplicative inverse of 2 thirds is 3 halves, because when you multiply 2 thirds and 3 halves, you get 1. Similarly, some square matrices have multiplicative inverses. When we multiply them to the two matrices together, we get a special matrix called the identity matrix. And today we're going to investigate both of those things. So first, let's define what is the identity matrix. The identity matrix is a square matrix, and it has ones along the main diagonal, and it has zeros everywhere else. So here's an example. This is the 2x2 two two identity matrix, here's the 3x3 three three identity matrix, the 4x4 four four identity matrix would have four ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, etc. We can have an n by n identity matrix of any size you desire. The 1x1 one one identity matrix, by the way, just has the number 1 in it. Okay. An inverse matrix is for a square matrix A. The inverse matrix, notated like this, A, looks like to the negative 1 power, but it's read A inverse, is a matrix such that A times A inverse is equal to A inverse times A is equal to I, the identity matrix of the same size. So if I have a 3 by 3 matrix and it can be inverted, that inverse matrix multiplied with the original matrix will give me this 3 by 3 identity matrix. So the first thing we're going to do is verify that two matrices are inverse matrices. So here's A, 1, 2, 1, 0, and B, 0, 1, 1 half, common negative 1 half. All I want to do to determine if these are inverses is to determine if the, um, not the quotient, the product, AB is equal to the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So let's multiply A times B. Okay, so multiply 1 and 2 by 0 and 1 half. I get 0, 1 times 0 is 0, plus 2 times 1 half, that is 1. Okay, continuing on. For my first row, second column entry, I have 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Okay, and then moving on to my second row. Second row times first column. I have 0 plus 0. And second row times second column, I have 1 plus 0. Okay, so simplifying this, I get 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is the identity matrix. Now, I hope at least somebody is out there saying, this is often, you told us matrix multiplication is not commutative. Well, it turns out that if the two matrices are inverses, then the multiplication is commutative. The order does not matter. And I encourage you to try multiplying B times A, and see if you get the identity matrix again. We're not going to do that here. Now, we can find an inverse. Now, I'm going to find the inverse of this matrix. A equals 2, negative 17, 11, 1, or negative 1, 11, negative 7. 0, 3, negative 2. The way that I'm going to do that is to append this 3 by 3 identity matrix to the last column. So here's my original starting matrix, and I'm going to append the identity matrix to it. What I'm going to do is to use elementary row operations to transform this original matrix into the identity matrix. And then the result that I get over here is going to be my inverse matrix. 
So I've recorded this. Okay, so here's my original matrix. Here's my original identity matrix. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these extra, um, I call them X's, in the first column. I want to turn everything in the first column except for the first column first row entry into zeros. So to do that, I first add R1 plus 2 times R2, and I'm going to write my answer in R2. And you see my answer written here, 0, 4, negative 3, and I'm adding 1, 2, and 0. So already this is starting to change. Okay, next I combine two steps into one, and I hope you'll forgive me. I don't usually do this, but in the interest of space, I have done this here. I've decided that I'm going to eliminate the negative 3 in row 2 and eliminate the negative 17 in row 1. So the first thing that I'm going to do is multiply row 3 by 17 and add that to 3 times row 1. So as you can see row 3 is remaining unchanged here. So I end up with this turning into negative 51 and this turning into positive 51, it zeroes out. This turns into negative 34, or I'm sorry, this turns into negative 34, this turns into positive 33, their sum is 1. Multiplying this 2 by 3, I get 6. So I have 6, 0, 1. Now over here, multiplying by 3, I get 3, multiplying this by 17 and adding it, I get 17 up here. Next, you say, okay, I'm going to do negative 3 R3, still that same R3, plus 2 times R2. Okay, so with my row 3 from the previous step, negative 3 R3 plus 2 times R2, this is negative 9 plus 8, that's 1. This is negative, or this is positive 6 plus negative 6, that turns into the 0 that you see here. So I get 0, 1, 0, which is awesome. I'm so close to where I want to be now. I'm really getting a lot more zeros than what I started out with. And that generates this next line for me, 2, 4, negative 3. Okay. Um, these multiplied by 2 give me 2 and 4. This 1 multiplied by negative 3 gives me the negative 3 when I add everything together. And if you're saying, gosh, this is really hard to follow, stop the video, work through it on your own, note where you have questions because we can talk about it tomorrow. Or we can talk about it any day in class, really. All right, so I just copied over the big mess that I had from the other page. This is where we left off. And so my next plan is to eliminate the three down here. So then I have two zeros in my lowest row. So I'm going to multiply row 2 by negative 3, add that result to row 3, and write my answer in row 3. So multiplying row 2 by negative 3 and adding, well, this is zeroed out. This was 0, so it stays negative 2. Um, 2 times negative 3 plus 0 is this negative 6. 4 times negative 3 plus the 0 is negative 12. And 3 times negative, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, plus 1 gives me 10. So you can see that this side is starting to look more and more like the identity matrix, while this side is looking less and less like the identity matrix. And that helps to see if we're on the right path. Okay. Next thing I do, I say, oh gosh, I gotta get rid of this one over here. And so what I do is multiply row three times 0.5. And 0.5 times row three gets me negative two times 0.5 is one plus that, or is negative one plus that one is zero. Going down here, I have negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 12, half of that is going to be negative 6. And 10 times 0.5 is 5, plus 17 is 22. 
So I have all this, and you can see it's looking pretty good. It's really close. But I just need to multiply this row by 1 6 and this row by negative 1 half, and then I'll get to my inverse matrix. So multiplying this row by 6, or by 1 6, gives me this. Middle row is staying the same. Multiplying the bottom row by negative 1 half, I get this. So over here, I've turned into the identity matrix. This side, on the right hand side of the fence, is the inverse of my original matrix. So my original matrix was 2, negative 17, 11, negative 1, 11, negative 7, and 0, 3, negative 2. So this is the inverse of that matrix. And if we were to multiply them together, we'd get the identity matrix. So I think that's pretty tedious. You can do it though with four by four and five by five matrices, and I've done it, and it's kind of like the worst experience of my life, or very close to the worst experience of my life. So we won't be doing that. I encourage you to use technology, which we will discuss in class. We can also use it for two by two matrices, but in good news, there's another way to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. So here's my given matrix. Matrix A, A, B, C, D. If I want to find the inverse, I can find this fraction, 1 over the quantity A, D minus B, C, times the new matrix, D, negative B, negative C, A. This quantity here is called the determinant, and we'll talk more about it in another video. Basically, you don't want it to be 0, or the matrix will not have an inverse. So let's put this into practice, finding the inverse of this matrix, A. So I'm going to use my formula. Okay, this is going to give me A inverse. So here's a, B, C, D. So, A, D is 3 times 3, or 9. B, C is negative 2 times 2, or negative 4. So, I have 9 minus negative 4. It's A inverse, not A. Okay. So, if I swap D and A, well, they're both 3. So, they'll still be 3 and 3. Okay, and if I change the signs, this was negative 2, so it's going to turn into positive 2. This was positive 2, it's going to turn into negative 2. Now, what I can do is distribute, or I can just leave the scalar value outside of the matrix. I bet you didn't know this, but matrices are a lot like vectors because they're, they're scalars and then there's matrices, just like there's scalars and then there's vectors. I guess I could talk about that more, but you might not be so excited to hear about it. Look it up on the internet. So I generally write my answer this way because it's easier, but you can feel free to distribute that scalar by multiplying each of the entries in the matrix by the scalar. So that's how you find the inverse of small matrices. And I look forward to doing this as we solve linear systems. Thanks and have a good day.